Hi everyone and welcome to this Unilead Digital Transformation in Higher Education talk. I'm very happy to be with you here today. Today's talk will revolve around teaching and learning in higher education, putting an emphasis on the educator and what the digital transformation potentially means for him or her in this capacity. In that line, I will advance three interrelated ideas that it is, in a lot of cases, the need for reconsideration of one's educator persona, the expectation to not only teach but also become a content producer, and the subsequent necessity for support units to assist in the negotiation of these expectations. While I will speak from an educator perspective, I will also try to put myself in the shoes of the colleagues in the teaching and learning support units, the so-called third space. It is not least with the digital transformation, and certainly manifested within the current situation, that this group of higher education professionals has emerged to be crucial to be on the side of higher education educators. When Unilead started in 2008, terms such as blended learning, e-learning and online learning had been around for quite some time, both in research and in practice. And as you have all experienced, Unilead itself was conceptualized as a blended learning offering, making use of the affordances of online and in-person learning. Today, only a little more than a decade later, a shift has taken place. E-learning primarily referred to the micro-level of teaching and learning. On the side of the educator, this included the provision of a learning environment, the learning material and learning tasks, as well as carrying out the online courses. But today's terminology is broader and more encompassing so that we can now follow the premise that labels such as digital transformation or digitalization of studies can be taken to also include the processes revolving around the immediate teaching and learning situation. This would then also include to plan courses and programs, to network and exchange information, to evaluate programs and courses and ensure sustainability and transfer. Why does this concern me, an educator might ask? As we have seen in the past year, the need for human and social relationships within teaching and learning is vital. This is not least expressed through the overwhelming use of video conferencing within university courses since COVID-19. Video conferencing means to see and hear one another and be in the same place at the same time. A social event like the classroom, but maybe also simply a way in trying to replicate the learned teaching style of one's in-person class. An educator with experience in in-person teaching has acquired a repertoire of pedagogical strategies, a mental attitude and physical positioning towards her or his class. With growing experience, one learns how to read a course and to react when it either slips away or fully engages. However, this established educator habitus can be challenged through increased co-presence of education technology or even full online teaching mode. This challenge might be experienced by not being able to see learners when their cameras are turned off, how can this be read and what does it mean, or as a feeling of not being able to reach everyone in class or being reluctant to rely on asynchronous course units as part of the course design. As part of the digitalization or digital transformation within teaching and learning, the habitus of the in-person educator is subject to change, oftentimes not as such in regard to values, attitude or content knowledge but in the way of developing strategies to enacting them online and from now on more certainly more often at a distance. Closely linked is the question to what extent this requires the educator to also become more of a content producer than she or he was before and what skills are needed in this regard. Why would I now be a content producer, the same educator might ask. Educators are reproducers or rather curators of content when they lecture when they make the choice of what to include in a course and what not. However, the increased use, or as of right now, reliance, of online available content means that it needs to be created and produced before. Setting up and filling the structure of an online course, recording and cutting videos, writing and publishing learning units. Instead of primarily orchestrating group work, assigning tasks and providing written material in the traditional in-person class on campus, Educators need to first produce audio, visual, written, and structural content. Do I want to have numerous videos or podcasts of myself online? How do I position myself towards topics such as open education resources? And do I have the capacity of self-training and cutting videos, developing a sound online course, and still be the teacher that I am when meeting on campus? These might be questions that arise and that reconnect with the envisaged educator persona. So, the colleague from Teaching and Learning Support might say, 
This is where you, the educator, can easily see the influence that digital transformation has had on teaching and learning so far. Educators are called to understand education technology as part of the pedagogical setup of the learning environment that they interact in with their students. However, and we also know that educators' readiness and willingness to integrate edtech varies across the disciplines. And the spectrum is broad. With the initial emergency remote teaching in 2020, seeing online first-timers as well as very experienced educators who have long started to complement and enrich in-person courses with edtech. From an institutional perspective on teaching and learning, support units in this realm have grown in importance over the past years, serving the purpose of assisting in the professionalization of teaching and assuring its quality, as well as easing the way into a part of the academic job that one would otherwise familiarize with only or mainly through learning by doing. These higher education professionals or third space bring specialized knowledge and skills knowledge and pedagogy, and here in the sound integration of edtech, as well as media production, that someone with a background rooted primarily in her or his scientific discipline might not necessarily have. In that way, they can also potentially contribute to a higher education institution's question or decision to see digitalization as either modernization, that is, the modern university has digital elements as part of teaching, or profiling, that is, the digital teaching offerings are part of developing a certain profile and distinction. But for now, how will teaching and learning evolve within digital transformation? From institutional surveys, interviews, and anecdotal evidence, we can tentatively conclude, as educators and teaching support colleagues, that higher education will see an even more profound integration of in-person and online teaching and learning scenarios. This is not necessarily a new idea, and it is also not groundbreaking. But the current situation has shown that the social, immediate aspect of being together in a physical room with people is crucial for learning and for well-being. And still, with the flexibility in time and space that online learning offers to learners and educators only sinks into the mainstream now. And there is still room to develop refined blended learning settings that cater to different perceived needs. Also, looking into the immediate surroundings, questions on the nature and operation of online or remote assessments will provide space and work for educators and support to be creative. And the touch upon a broader set of topics, assessment purposes, ethics, law and infrastructure beyond an individual course. The perceived need to partly reconsider one's understanding as an educator and the strategies to enact it highlights that ongoing support is important, be that in the conceptualization of courses, pedagogically justified use of education technology, or knowledge and media and online content production. The provision of this support, a long-term budget that follows the logic of teaching as a continuous task as opposed to project-based research and to win educators into consolidating what began as emergency remote teaching, therefore seem to be the challenges to tackle in the months and years to come. On a practical level, this also entails to recognize online teaching more comprehensively and take into account that the above-mentioned content production is time and resource consuming. Returning to the initial understanding that digitalization of studies or digital transformation occurs on more levels than the immediate course scenario, we can now see that it is also not solely in the hands of instructors, students and support staff, but an institution-wide endeavor not least influenced through decision whether between modernizing an institution or developing its profile. And in this sense, I hope that you, as former and present uni leaders, continue with the idea of working on the structures that your institutions revolve around to make them successfully meet the challenges, but also opportunities of today and tomorrow. Thank you very much for your attention.